Sup nerds, I'm Tom. I'm Wes. And I'm Aaron. This is a heavy game, so here's the obligatory... <laughs> Before we get into this, I do want to say I actually did get a chance to play this game as a prototype with Mike and JB about a year ago, and it is really cool to see a game go from prototype to a full production and see the, the little tweaks and the, the ways that it changes and stuff. And also... I really love this game, so I'm really glad that it was able to get made. And it wasn't even on Kickstarter. So I can't find the one category to, to lump this into, but it's a little bit of like tile laying, city building. It's a lot of uh, card play where you're playing your cards, and then there's certain cards in your deck that'll let you bring your cards back to your hand so you can kind of reset. You, you kind of play yeah. them once at a, you know, it's per like round. A, It's like Concordia, if you've ever played that. Or Margaret's of Valeria. Which isn't out yet. Or... But if you played it... The one from Plan B with the spices, Spice Road, Century Spice Road, Century yeah. Spice Road, yeah, yeah, it's all that's like true. That too. If you played that, but this is way heavier because there's so much more going on. Without talking about like the mechanics of the game, the biggest hook that this game has is that there are like two distinct modes of play. You can do all of these things, like all of your cards will have a sink side where you do all of these things in one certain way. And then there's a moment in the game where you can choose to flip, where you literally flip your cards, flip your tiles and flip different things to the sky side. And then you play and you do mostly the same things. Like you still have the same category of card that you get to play that does the same type of thing, but it's just in a different manner. And it's like you can flip whenever you want. You can flip turn one. You could never flip. So that's a really cool hook that the game has, but it isn't just like a gimmick or whatever. It really does make the gameplay and the interaction between the other players at the table really interesting. It almost makes it feel like you're playing two games because even though they're really similar, the sinks, like your goal on sink side is a lot of like, like in both of you are trying to play the token tiles to build out your area, but on sink side you're doing a lot of collecting resources and selling those resources for money, collecting more resources, selling those resources for money, and like the the value of the goods all varies based on supply and demand, which was super cool because if you see that like oh man blue is way up here with seven apiece, I want to get a bunch of blue and sell them off for seven each, but then they all, it goes back down by the number you sold it. So then if we were both going for blue, your blue are now worth a whole lot less than I was able to sell them for. And when you flip, you're then trying to collect resources and by spend them. them to build your, yeah, you have to buy the resources mm -hmm. so you get a bunch of them so you can spend them to actually build the tokens that you collected the first round, but now you have to like, you draw all the tokens back up into your hand. Just say tiles, man. <laughs> Token tiles. So you draw all the tiles back up into your hand, and now you're paying for each one you play in those resources. So it's a really cool dynamic when you're sky side and other people are sink side because they're collecting and selling resources, and then I'm going and buying those resources. So they're able to look at what I'm doing, what token, what tiles I have in front of me, and say, oh, he's got a ton of reds, so he's going to be buying a lot of reds. So let me collect red, mm -hmm. so that once he buys them all up and they're in high demand, I can then sell them all back and get a lot of money for it. Obviously, you're not going to be able to walk away from this video knowing how to play the game, because it is, there is a lot here. And mm -hmm. I will say, though, that, the, so the teach is long, but the, uh, well, okay. So all the mechanics of the game do flow together pretty well. Now there it will be a little bit of a wrinkle when you go to flip. Mm -hmm. Like you'll gather, you'll you'll pretty much pick up the, the main game mechanics, especially if you've played heavier games. You'll pick that up pretty quick. And then as you start to play and you start considering the option of flipping is when you'll have to say, wait a minute, so how exactly is that different? Why do I want to flip? What, you know, what's the opportunity? Like what's the the you know, benefit to flipping now versus flipping later. Mm -hmm. So I guess there is that slight wrinkle, but overall I do still feel like the the teach and the first gameplay, you know, the learning game is surprisingly smooth. Yeah, it, I would say that it's a heavy game, but it's not necessarily a crunchy game. Like there's not like that much just like all these things try to come together, you're figuring it out. Like Tom said, it all flows really well and you get it pretty quick. There's just a lot of options to stuff to do. Yeah. You have four different guilds, which you can put your influence in and gather new cards in those guilds. So, like, you know, you, if you want to do a lot of scavenging, you might just get a lot of the the, del the delvers so that you can stay sink side and just go out and do lots of diving, get, getting lots of resources. 
then there's like if you want to trade a lot you're going to want to try to get some traders and in, into your group of cards as well so you might want to influence that guild um all these guild tracks as they're going around you're also collecting other resources at the end whoever has the most influence there gets bonus points so you do want to kind of you know play dabble in that plus it gives you more cards and more options um with the tiles they're double-sided like you're saying so when you, you you draw a tile out it has one of the colors on it for the resources and that's what you can collect there. But also, when you flip it over, that's the resources it requires to build it. So you can kind of, you can kind of crunch the numbers and figure out like, okay, I've been, I've collected a whole bunch of these yellow ones. When I flip over, maybe I want to bring some yellow resources with me so I can start building right away, because mm-hmm. right? I know I have them. Or you know, just looking at all your tiles, there's there's so much uh, just like strategy and you know where you place around your, your kind of dock too in a way because. Just going out and get the resources, you have to have movement to move back. So, you know, you're going to send your boats out, get the resources, and then drive them back and drop them off. And you can only place, there's like three different depths of water. So that's kind of cool. Then you have like the shallows, then you have like the medium, which is like two waves. Then you have the deep water. (laughs) I know those two. I don't know what the middle one is. It's like the shoal or something. And then when you do collect resources, you're rolling dice, and you can like over exhaust them was it uh deplete deplete yeah. so yeah, then yeah. you can't get resources there anymore so it's kind of like a little bit of a risk when you roll mm-hmm. a lot of dice and it is a really interesting dynamic again i know we're going to focus on this hook a little bit but like deciding when to flip can be really tricky because again you'll be you can't flip back is a big mm-hmm. thing so you're like i don't want to le- i'm looking at these goals that i can complete uh which is actually a big way that you get points mm-hmm. um is like there's a lot of things that get you a little bit of points mm-hmm. but some of the main way are completing these goal tiles that are out there which are actually pretty cool they're kind of a stefan feldy or whatever but like if you meet the condition multiple times you get that many points multiple times which is a big deal because you can definitely look out there on the and be like i can complete this one i can complete that one i can complete that one but i want to be able to complete it multiple times to get a whole bunch of points and so it's a little bit of press your luck because you're like i've got it twice i can get it up to four times let me try to get one more and then i see that you're doing that so that i go and take it out from underneath you yeah so you take so like let's say this one here uh good example yeah artifacts um what what's artifacts well we're not gonna explain that to you (laughs) okay nine points for each of your artifacts uh, to a max of four for 36 points well uh, I'm going to go for that. Oh, no, he stole it out from under me. Okay, well, now it's seven points per artifact to a max of five. So I have to get even. I have to get an, another artifact to still not get the same amount of points. But also, if I could complete one of these, and then I'm like, well, but also I want to flip. If I flip, then I'm leaving those points on the table. So you have to kind of decide. But there are some over here, and they're kind of right. similar. Like, there, there's some, not like overlap, but... The way you would go for those is similar to the way you would go for these on the sky side. Even though you're playing a different game, it's still, you know, artifacts is when you have the tiles aligned in a certain way. And then up here, the sonar, whatever, yeah, well, is also way. having the tiles aligned a certain well, way. Well, yeah, there's the reverse. So you, if, if it's played on this side, it wouldn't be on that side. But you can flip this wow, when you're setting up. thanks for correcting me, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm saying, like, yeah, it but, can be similar. Yeah. There's, yeah. Like, that particular one isn't going to be on both sides at the same time unless you just broke the rules and shuffled everything up. What I'm saying with that, though, is you almost have this, like, compulsion to want to maximize everything you can do on the sink side before you flip over and not, you know, leave points in, on the other side, so to speak. But the thing is that there's a big ramp in the game. Like, uh, points Are is limited. the... There, there's... Yeah, well, they're, they're end game trigger more than limited because you can yes. still get more afterwards. But so they're end game triggers. You put, set aside 100 points per player, and then once those are gone, that's what triggers the end of the game. And once the first like 100 are gone, the next 100, so like the first 100 would take like 10 or 15 turns, and then the next will take like four turns. Yeah. Like there's a huge rant because as you get more points, you get even more points and more and more and more and more, more. And there is some like you recognize like there aren't that many points left, so. Instead of saving up for the big payoff, I'm going to make sure I get the smaller payoff now before I lose everything. Mm-hmm. But it also is the ramp of, you know, now that I have a lot of things, there's I can combo better on the sky side because this, the when you score your, t- your tiles, it's a multiplier. So mm-hmm. if I've got, you know, a three green sky area that I'm multiplying by three, so it's, it's multiplying by three, let's say I have five. That's 15 points. If I add another one to it, it's then it's six, six and I multiply three. it times three. 
Now I have the 15 points that I scored last time, and now I've got the, tw the 18 points that I'm adding to mm -hmm. that 15. So that's a big part of how the ramp happens. Yeah, and also, like, there are some incentivizations almost for, like, one person to just not flip. Because, mm -hmm. like, you... it. When you flip, it kind of takes a while for you to get your footing on that other side and start making those points like he was just talking about. So, and there are a couple uh, mechanics in there to be like, well, once one person flips, the, the seasiders kind of have a little bit of an advantage. But we were thinking, we were realizing, it may not be the best thing to let one person flip and then just let them kind of run away with that side mm -hmm. of the game. Like mm -hmm. once one person flips, somebody else needs to be like, all right, I should probably start flipping soon because if I don't... And there's too many seasiders. We might be fighting each other for points too much, and he's getting a lot of points. Yeah, we're getting the scraps, so he's getting a bunch of points. So I should flip now. I should flip within the next turn or two, so that I can start doing the thing that he's doing, and we're compete. Me and him are competing on the same level. While you're just sitting there, okay. So I'm fine doing my thing and picking up what you guys are leaving off for me. So there again, it's just very interesting player interaction dynamic there. Yeah, and especially because the two. It is like the the Sky Siders and the Sing Siders are playing two different games on top of each other that influence each other. So the things that you're mm -hmm. doing on the Sky side influences what's happening on the Sing side and yeah. vice versa with the economy of these things and the sonar changing and all of that. And artifacts. Yeah, so it being a minority, I feel like, is a really cool thing because you feel like you're doing just a different game than everyone else. And yeah, you definitely don't want to let somebody run away with Sky side without going up and like contesting a little bit over those points. Yeah, I feel like Aaron's been trying to say something. I was about <laughs> to say those two the two traps. It's like it's really interesting that yeah, as I'm finding artifacts as the the sink side, it's increasing those actions for the sky side people. Like mm -hmm. I never took that action, so I forget what it how, how you do uh, it. It's it's with the dice. Okay, whenever yeah. they roll three of the same symbol over here. Yeah, so you're collecting better stuff because I've found all these artifacts and you're collecting off of it. And mm -hmm. then when you guys do your uh, the completing completing those. the circle as well you increase the sonar track which gets you a bunch of bonus points but it also makes it better when i roll sonar dice when i'm out searching for resources so like we kind of like help each other like mm -hmm. yeah, there's, just, there's just ebb and flow a push and pull type of thing yeah, that, is, that is kind of unique in this game like compared to other games like there aren't i haven't played anything where something i do directly affects the board state but has no effect on me unless i have decided that I'm going to be playing in this manner, yeah. kind of, so to speak. Uh, the only, my, my biggest negative with the gameplay, one negative is a little bit of component quality, but we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there, um, is there is this toxicity mechanic where when you draw tiles from the bag, um, whether you keep them or not, you'll have these toxicity uh, in symbols the water. Yeah. in the water, and you'll the more you gain, the more negative points it will be for you, and... Mike and JB told me that oh they've that they've seen people end the game where nobody has got where they where a player has had not gained any negative points from it right they're still in the very first tier two. and that sounds kind of ridiculous to me because everybody it seems like you get a bunch of toxicity you almost can't help it like yeah you could get lucky in your draw because a lot of the toxicity comes from these tiles. So maybe if you get really lucky and you never draw them. Yeah, but you but, but you drawing tiles is such a big part of the game. And I think it's kind of like a necessary evil because mm -hmm. it is in there because some tiles are objectively better than others and those ones tend to have more toxicity on them, which seems like a balancing act. You're not just going to, oh, I happen to draw all the really good tiles, you know, eat it, everybody. It's, oh, I happen to draw all the really good tiles, but I still took some toxicity, so it's a little bit balanced there. And it is a mechanic that's... in. In influence in other things like it's influenced in the sonar track and there's some cards that can let you avoid it so i get that it's a part of the game and again sort of a necessary evil mm -hmm. but i just it's it's one thing that i i don't love i, I you know i'm not a big fan of negative player interact and it's not interaction it's just negative player experience but you know it's just a thing like if it wasn't there i'd be like all right cool i didn't even notice it you know it's just uh the grain of salt i have to take with this game it's almost like the feed your people thing it just keeps happening but yeah, you have to just kind of accept it as an inevitability. You have to just kind of accept it as an inevitability. Yeah. The nice thing is that once you get to the negative 15, like, it doesn't go on forever. So yeah. you could get there and be like, well, screw it. It can't get any worse now. Yeah, hell yeah, I'll draw eight tiles. Let's do it. Yeah. The the only way I could really see you avoiding it is if you were to get the this Helmsman guy, Helmsman. Mm -hmm. He uh, draws four and you can avoid two. So, you know, if you're getting really lucky with your draws and you're getting less than two every time, and there's a, a tier two guy that 
does a similar thing. It, it th Those are the only guys that avoid it. So it would be really hard to not get negative points. So since we're talking negatives, really my only negative with this game, and I, I really enjoyed this game a whole lot, is when you do go sky side, the board is all set up for sink side. You don't notice it at all if you're on the sink side. But on the sky side, like these cards that you get are double sided. When you go sky side, you flip them all over. But like the, the market where you purchase from, they're all on sink side. So when you go to purchase cards, you don't just get to look, you have to pick this one up, look at the back, pick, look at the back. Like, mm -hmm. And there, there's a couple things like the tiles, um, the radiation is all on the sink side of the tile. Toxicity. Not the toxicity, yeah. But when you draw sky side, the toxicity still matters. So you have to like, okay, this is my tile. Oh, and there's radiation on the back. Okay, I need to mark that. So I, I don't know if it's a good fix because they are double-sided cards and half people are playing on one side and half people are playing on the other. Mm -hmm. But it, it felt kind of fiddly in it's such a... An, it's just another necessary evil. Yeah, I just didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, like I said, my only other non-gameplay complaint is the component quality a little bit. Like, I've obviously seen worse... But I have seen better. Like, um, I don't like how these uh, resources are c cylinders, so they roll across the table. The dice are really good. Mm -hmm. The tiles are pretty decent and, and thick. Like, all the cardboard, the cards are a little thin. Uh, the bag for the tile, I'm glad they included a bag. But it's, and it's a huge bag, but it's almost still not big enough. Like, the component, I mean, the these little, uh, little meeple tower things look great. Mm -hmm. And the, you have different ships. So it's like the component quality for me is like a 6.5 or 7 out of 10. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, again, I've seen worse. But it's not necessarily something to write home about. You know what I mean? I will say that I know there was a lot of concerns when it was announced that WizKids picked this game up. Yeah, and considering yeah. that, I'm really happy with how it came out. Because <laughs> it, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> but considering all of that, I was like, oh, I'm good with this. Like Especially like the, the two-tiered board here that like has the dials that move and you flip this out depending on the player count and stuff. It, I agree. Nothing to write home about, but yeah, pleasantly like, surprised. It's not. It's not Eagle Griffin quality or Fantasy Flight quality, but you know, I don't know. I've got to have some complaints. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed this game. I think my favorite thing about it was kind of dealing with these influence tracks because there's a lot of stuff to be gained on them. Uh, if you're not, you know, gaining cards, you can just gain like resources or gain. Um, survivors. survivors or gain coins after the track has been after all the cards are empty or if you just decide you don't want the top card there's a way to like kind of skip past one of them to get around it even quicker so you can throw down more of your influence tokens on there so you can make sure you hold it down and get those extra victory points I like I just liked having the option of getting all of these new cards and building like a really superior deck of like okay I'm gonna play this card and next turn I'll play this one and this one and this one it, it reminded me of Century Spice Road where like I would build up okay if I play this one so I'll, I'll collect resources and then I'll play this other one which will let me get some tiles and then I'll use the movement on that card to move over here and then on the next turn I'm gonna sell all that stuff and the next turn like if, if you just kind of like set up your scenario of what you want to do in your hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one, one thing you did say there is definitely true is I like how there's a lot of symbols printed everywhere. Like you mm -hmm. always feel like you're getting a decent amount of stuff whenever you do things. So you never feel like, oh, my that turn was nothing. Yeah. You're always getting something. There's always a lot of options. You know, there's, uh, again, just little, every every movement. You know, I advance on here, I gain stuff. I advance on here, I gain stuff. I play my card. Oh, this one also lets me move. Oh, this one also gives me money. Oh, okay. You know, cool things like that. So yeah, like I said at the beginning, I really love this game. I think it's awesome. It's super unique. I'm really glad I live in a world where this game exists. If you're a big fan of heavy games, or if you're new to heavy games, this could be a relatively decent, like, I don't want to say intro to heavy games, because that's kind of a paradox there, but, you know, it's if it's one of your first few heavy games, it'll definitely, you know, get you warmed up for something, because, again, it's, it's big, but there are bigger. It right? might, Absolutely. It might wet... Your appetite. It might wet your whistle. Because oh, it's, nobody wets water. their appetites. I do think my favorite thing about this game is how many paths to victory points there are. Definitely not a point salad game, but there are so many different strategies that you can utilize. And and I get that's like there's a fine line between those two terms, but it's not no matter what you do, you're just getting points. But there's so many like if I take this avenue in four turns, I could get 22 points that way. If I take this avenue, I could get, you know, four points for the next three turns. And, like, 
just a bunch of different things like that that there's a bunch of different paths to shoot down and you can try to like overlap as much as you can but there are so many different strategies even we're saying like staying on sig side the whole game mm -hmm. could be a legitimate strategy people have won never going to sky side or going to sky side really quick really early when no one else is ready i've never done it but that could pan off really well and it's just a game that i feel like has so much replayability because you can just decide hey this game i'm going to try to do this i'm going to try to go the whole game with really avoiding toxicity or I'm going to lean into the toxicity of this game, get my negative 15, and then I don't care anymore, and I can drive really hard to push points that way. It just, it's a great game. It's not a brain burner, but it is a heavy game in my opinion. Like, it's not, it's just, it's not super crunchy. There's a lot going on, but I felt like it was a lot smoother than a lot of other bigger games where I just can't wrap my head around it. Cause everything's like divided <clears throat> well like because you're influencing this you're not influencing this as well and because you're putting a tile here you're not influencing that like there isn't like th there is interaction between things but i don't right. feel like you're having to like explain to explain this i have to explain this to you and to explain that to you i actually have to explain this to you yeah i think you're right yeah it's definitely the different aspects of the game are more sort of self-contained. Yeah. Like you could, like you can understand this aspect and then you can understand this aspect and then you can understand this aspect. So it's not like a long list of things you need to do to get to this outcome. It's just, these are all the different things that you could do. Pick one. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. I could see that. Just when you say it's not brain burning, I was like, I don't know, but I think I know what you mean. Yeah, it's definitely heavy. Though. It's yeah. It doesn't have the crunchiness that a lot of them do. I think is how I'm going to come and back and say it again. Wes is not going to define the word crunchy for you what does he mean by crunchy well he said it eight times but well i mean let's see so if you guys want to check out flotilla we're gonna have a purchase link in the description box down below i definitely recommend that you check this out and while you're down there don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you'll never be bored and support us on patreon and then uh like like, or, like, like and share, share it share it on star on stuff you could have also gone with the water world reference uh yeah you're never gonna get another one of those Welcome to Waterworld. He's got gills! <laughs> He's a mutie! Right? He said something like that.